We, uh, I'm Master Chief John Millen, and it is an honor and a privilege to be your master of ceremonies for today's event. I'm going to start out with recognizing our families and our uh, VIPs in attendance today. So, Captain Bauer's family, Maria Bauer, Miss Dulcie Lloyd, Martine Gomez. There we are. There we are. Zachary Bauer. There we go. Sophia Bauer. Okay. Mackenzie Bauer. Good morning. Madeline Bauer. Got a couple more. A couple more. Madeline Bauer. There we are. Hello. John Bauer. Hello, sir. How you doing? Louis Otero. Yeah, the other side, okay. <laughs> Captain Karosich's family, Katie Karosich, Reed Karosich, and Cody Karosich. Good morning, family. Good morning. <laughs> and for our VIPs in attendance, Captain David Hart. Yep. Mr. Dave Barker, Mr. John Robertson, Mr. and Mrs. Boyles, Mr. Carlos Agoya, morning, sir, and Mr. Eric Icky. There you are. Good morning. On behalf of the officers, enlisted personnel, and civilians of Southwest Regional Maintenance Center, welcome to today's change of command ceremony. In just a few moments, Rear Admiral Green, Commander, Navy Regional Maintenance Center, Rear Admiral Lloyd, Captain Bauer, Commanding Officer, Southwest Regional Maintenance Center, and Captain Karosich, United States Navy, will be arriving. Honors will be rendered to the principal participants in the ceremony. Will the guests please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing until completion of the invocation? Bozen, Bozen side boys. Aye, aye, Master Chief. Side boys. Post. Left or right face. Forward march. Southwest Regional Maintenance Center. Attention. Captain, United States Navy arriving. Regional Maintenance Center arriving. Rear Admiral, United States Navy arriving. Center arriving. Left or right face. Color guard, 
arrayed the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Swarming, arrayed, rest. Mr. Otero will offer the invocation. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So, so wonderful. All right. uh, great occasion. Thank you for coming. And uh, I'm your chaplain for the day. And uh, if you can, would you all, those of you online and here with me, please uh, join me for prayer. That's right. Heavenly Father, we come before you with grateful hearts, acknowledging your guidance and blessings in our lives and the lives of those who serve. Today, as we witness the passing of leadership, we ask for your presence among us and help us to embrace the Navy's commitments of leadership excellence and the enduring values of duty, honor, and country. We thank you for Captain Bauer's dedication, service, and positive impact he has had on making Swarming the best RNC there is. We ask that his future endeavors be guided by the same strength and wisdom that have marked his leadership. We pray for our incoming commander, Captain Karosic, as he takes on this man's of responsibility. Grant him the wisdom, the courage, and discernment needed to be lead with integrity, vision, and compassion. May he inspire and guide Swarm to new heights, fostering unity, strength, and excellence. Lord, bless the families and loved ones of our leaders and all who serve. Provide them strength, peace, and comfort, knowing the importance of their support and sacrifice. As we move forward, may we all be reminded of our duty to each other, our country, and to the principles that bind us. Let us strive for excellence in all that we do, upholding the honor and tradition of our service. Amen. Thank you, sir. Will the guests please be seated? Swarmick, at ease. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain John Bauer, Commanding Officer, Southwest Regional Maintenance Center. All right. 
sometimes they come out for another hour or two, so uh, I think we're okay. We're not going to melt. Although it's supposed to be up in the upper 80s today, so we'll try to make this a little bit quick. My speeches will be the fastest. Everyone else up here will be the longest. <laughs> it's my day, my rules. I was going to start today's ceremony in a very non-traditional way. I was going to kick it off with a little hokey pokey, but I decided to turn myself around. <laughs> All seriousness, thanks to all the family and friends that have come out, especially to those that got out links to come out here. Uh, in particular, my, my mom and dad and several of the kiddos who got out links. Uh, Deep Park felt appreciation of some of the guests and friends that got that uh, drove in from several hundred miles away. Appreciate you coming out. I know it's a big ask, and Brian and I both deeply appreciate it. Uh, a big call out to the good Admiral Lloyd and Mrs. Admiral Lloyd, your four star, sir. Although I'm absolutely quite confident you're not here just to support me, you're here to validate that the boxer actually got underway. <laughs> a special thanks to Ms. Chris Boyles, who's here with her husband, Bob, AKA the badass baker. <laughs> That's how he's known at headquarters in DC. Takes one hell of a rum cake if you get a chance. Admiral Green, thank you, sir, for presiding over the ceremony. Absolutely great to have you here. I'd also like to say thanks to everyone who was working behind the scenes to set this up, putting up with all my, hey, I need to have a meeting comments, make sure everything was getting well done. Uh, and I, thanks to all the, the band and the ushers and the people setting up coolers. If you need water, there's coolers in the back. Uh, Color Guard and everybody else who's been part of the assembly here trying to put this up. Everybody here is honored by your efforts. Thank you very much for what you've done. I respectfully request that we start the ceremony today in a moment of silence. For those that cannot be here with us anymore. I'm just gonna try not to cry until at least halfway. Uh, those that can no longer be here anymore uh, with us physically, but will be here in spirit. We have members of our Southwest RMC family and a few from my own personal family. Please join me in a moment of silence for the following people. Chief Petty Officer Raymond Newton, EN2, Zachariah Gundera, ND1 Adriel Lee, STG1 Matt Wellington, DC1 Stephen Williams, Mr. Jeffrey Baumgartner, Mr. Steve Polkamp, Mr. Andre Moss, Mr. Fern Rice, my in-laws, My best friend, Paul. Sorry. Master Chief, I staged my own cleanup. <laughs> <laughs> just ready. just ready. have you know. Just have you know. I staged my own cleanup. All right. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. It is also my great pleasure right now to introduce Admiral Lloyd. Admiral Lloyd's a native of Maryville, Tennessee, enlisted in the Navy in 1986, selected for Navy Reserve Officer Training Corps program, attended Florida State University, which I don't hold against them. In 1992, he graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering and earned a commission as a Naval Officer. He also holds a Master's of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Naval Postgraduate School. Some highlights from a stellar career he's had. Shipboard tours include Bainbridge. I'm told this was and remains the finest crew and ship to ever sail. Somebody put that in there. I didn't write that, by the way. So I think that's probably an XO comment. And the USS Nimitz CDN-68 from May 2013 until June 2016. He served as the first reactor officer on Gerald Ford, the lead reactor officer in our lead ship and our newest class of aircraft carriers, that was. His ashore tours include Norfolk Naval Shipyard, Naval Air Forces, Soup Ship Newport News, the Executive Assistant to Nav C, and a return to Soup Ship Newport News because he didn't get it right the first time. 
No, just in terms as the commanding officer. Lastly, Admiral Lloyd assumed the duties as the chief engineer for the Navy. Uh, it says, excuse me, chief engineer and deputy commander for Navy Engineering and Logistics, Naval Sea Systems Command, which is the chief engineer for the United States Navy. Where I formally met him on my first command day, uh, Admiral Lloyd, if you remember that day, I took command, I walked off the stage, and you and I were on a phone call with him probably about 30 seconds talking about Steedham Indicator. Admiral Lloyd uh, unofficially retired this past June. We're still waiting for that final day to actually arrive. Uh, and because we're in that position right now, hey, Jason, thank you for taking the time to come out here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Lloyd. Bauer, Captain Grossich, fellow flag officers, members of the Senior Executive Service, industry executives, family, friends, and every great American out here. Thank you for coming. How about another round of applause for the man in the Philippines? I'd like to start by welcoming the families of the guests of honor. John's wife, Maria. Here, his children Sophia, Martine, Mackenzie, and Zachary. Thanks for being here. John's mom and dad, John and Madeline, thanks for coming. It's good to meet you as well. Among all the uh, extended family here supporting Captain Croson, there's wife Katie, nice to meet you this morning, and son Drake and Cody. Thank you all for coming. I do have to count off my comments with a short story. <clears throat> for those who don't know, and y'all do know now because John already covered it. I was relieved as the Naval Sea Systems Command Chief Engineer on 8 June and formally retired from the Navy on 1 August, a couple of weeks left. Um, Dulcie and I are still in our honeymoon phase of retirement, and one of the first trips we planned was to our beloved San Diego. We were stationed here a couple of times, but we haven't really got a chance to see you there. After we booked our trip, I was having a beer one night, got an invitation from Captain Bauer to attend this change of command by email. I sent him a text and uh, let him know, hey, I'll be there if I'm going to be in civilian clothes. Um, probably shorts and a t-shirt. And John immediately came back and said, uh, hey, I don't have a guest speaker yet. Would you want to put the uniform on one more time? My response, I wouldn't miss it for the world. This is my last thing I'll ever do in uniform. It's an honor to be here. John, you're wrapping up an amazing tour with your spouse as commanding officer of Southwest North Regional Maintenance Center. And I had in the spouse because our spouses are integral to what we do in the service. Absolutely integral. We demand a lot of our commanding officers. And we know that that is hard on the family. And we, so, we really appreciate the family support. Um, you got a great job. Stand by. Brian, you're about to sing the range from what I assure you will be around your life. So what made Captain Bauer so successful in this tour? And what principles will Captain Krosich need to follow in order to ensure that we sit here in three years with another band and another gig? I'm going to start with a few ideas from my retirement speech that I gave last month because a lot of it and you can't plagiarize on yourself. So let's go. These are the core characteristics that over 38 years of service, I believe are required for any leader to lead optimally, regardless of the decisions they have to make. First, they understand that as the world changes around us, we have to change with them in order to continue to be successful. If you don't like change, you don't like irrelevance even less. Second, they assume noble intent from everybody that they work with. This includes other government organizations, other NAFC organizations and other maintenance coordinators, high commander staffs, fleet, cu fleet customers, systems commanders, and most of all, our industry partners. One of the team partners is something that is incongruent with our beliefs. The first question a successful leader asks is, what am I missing? Not why are they so messed up? Third, they surround themselves by people who don't think or look like them. And then they harness the diversity of that team 
through a language of leadership in order to make the best team decisions. None of us are as smart as others. Fourth, they adopt the language of leadership and teamwork. Everyone here today and every individual involved in the construction and repair of naval ships and ship systems has one common objective. That objective is to make Xi Jinping wake up and say, I'm not confident I'll be successful in making Taiwan. That is all of us. Leaders act and speak accordingly. The only time you're allowed to use the word they is if you're talking about China or Russia. Otherwise, just me. And I mean this uh, to the core. Is one team or one nation, one team, one fight. To the things that made Captain Barb a successful commanding officer that stands before you today, completed a growing command tour, even if it was here in Paradise. I propose his experiences and the things that he did. The stories that I'll cover for you today sort of embody those principles that I just laid out. And I really did this, I got the stories before I told anybody about the principles, because I wanted to see if the things that he did backed up what I talked about in my retirement speech. The first story I want to relate to you is one where I quickly picked out, if you don't like change, you're going to like relevance even less. One team, one fight, and the only time you're allowed to use the is if you're talking about China or Russia. As many of you know, Commander Bauer was the program manager representative for DDG 1000 class. A first class ship with many, many challenges. DDG 1000 was preparing for an underway period and having problems with that pasturing control. The problem was narrowed to a circuit card and a spare was obtained. As usual, after installation and test on Saturday, we had a test failure and no more parts. At 1800, Commander Bauer walked across the pier to DDG 1001, went to tag it out division, told the ship sailors to remove the circuit card from DDG 1001 and install it on DDG 1000. The next day, the type commander staff right foul because Commander Bauer had followed the cannibalization process, and the commanding officer was quoted as saying, and this is a quote, so I can say this, what the hell is Commander Bauer pulling personal parts off of my ship for? Regardless, the subsequent installation proved successful, and DDG 1000 got underway for, on time Monday morning. Next story I'll, I'll relate is how JG learned, learned from a common mentor of ours, how important it is to be approachable as a leader and use that language of leadership to encourage your team to push back on you when you're wrong. You need that pushback. While serving as a project officer for USS San Antonio, also a first class ship that had lots of challenges. I've seen a trend here, JV. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Howard got off work one, late one after, Friday afternoon and met up with a couple of the few junior officers at a bar in Africa. After inviting in a few drinks, John gets a cell phone call in the loud bar. The individual on the other end identified himself as Bill and started asking questions that Commander Bauer couldn't understand due to the noise in the bar. Thinking it was a wrong phone number, he stepped outside the bar and in his classic JB, I'm annoyed at you voice, asked, wait, who is this? The caller responds, it's Bill Galena's job and I need to know the status of the generator. After realizing that Bill was Captain Galena's, major program manager for the LPD 17 class, John provided the status and says, sir, you really should identify yourself as a captain when you call, call someone on the personal cell phone. In true by his own style, his response was, John, I'm not going to do that. To this day, John answers every phone call simply as John Bauer, inviting people to drop titles and collaborate on solutions to problems. He learned the language of leadership, one team, one fight, none of us are smart as others. The third and final story was related to me clearly shows that Captain Bauer is an empathetic leader, one that always draws the best solutions from his team. It oozes with one team, one fight. And that story is Captain Bauer's nickname within the command, Papa. All of his sailors say that he treats them like a Papa and cares about their well-being and development. A true sailor sailor whose team will follow him anywhere. The best team? Yeah. Assuming that no intent was the only trait that I couldn't narrow down in the stories that Maria uh, my spy provided to me. <laughs> After I thought about it, I realized the professional relationship that John and I have formed over the last three years has been based on assuming no one's at. You assume no one's at, John, when NAVC headquarters is giving you an answer that doesn't make sense to you. Sometimes you learn and get smarter. Other times we question what we need to change at headquarters. 
Will you push back on me to make sure we continue to change as the world changes around us? We soon know what Tim will do with industry and other team and partners. I won't go into detail, but the way that you assume the whole intent of the supply system, the new construction program, industry repair spares ordering organizations, and other NAFC organizations as we worked our way through boxers bearing procurement, allowed us to learn, allowed us to ask for else, and allowed us to get better in many other areas other than boxer, although you thought we were only going to put on boxer. <laughs> Brian, I realize you're coming to us with being commanding officer at FDRMC during the big leagues now, you and Katie. A little history for those of you who may not know the crisis that our current nation currently faces and how we got here. After World War I and even through the Great Depression, our forefathers built this nation on manufacturing. We were the manufacturing leaders of the world, not producing other nations by scores. Preparing for World War II, we militarized the manufacturing base to outproduce Germany and Japan combined. Does anybody know how many ships we built in a four year period in World War II? 5,000. We built 2,700 Liberty ships over a four year period. The fastest took four days and 15 hours from the land of the delivery of the ship. We did this to superior manufacturing industrial base. It was a hard after the Berlin Wall fell in 1989, we as a nation stopped manufacturing. We stopped building ships. We stopped building planes. And we controlled the size of our military by decommissioning and downsizing. We let our non-military manufacturing base atrophy as we outsourced manufacturing work to other countries that could do it cheaper, such as the country that is now outproducing us in a multitude of areas. We became a nation of everybody goes to college and stopped investing in the cherished blue collar workforce that made our manufacturing base possible. We now no longer have the defense industrial base and sufficient skilled trades necessary to build and maintain our ships and ship systems. So this is where we are today, though. I'll note unequivocally I'm not faulting any past decision leaders. Hindsight's always 20-20 and I believe that very few of us that lived through the decisions of the 90s and early 2000s could have predicted where we ended up today. That many of us, including me, are here today. But the facts are, we have a shortage of warships, weapon systems, and weapons to deal with our national defense priorities. We have an industrial base that is proving that we are challenged to build and maintain ships and weapon systems to standards. We are living in an increasingly polar world with war in the Ukraine, war in the Middle East, and saber rattling in the South China Sea. Brian, you've the metaphor of trying to build a plane like a flag. This is exactly what you're going to do over the next couple of years with our industrial base. You must lead us through this challenge in the next few years. You and Katie must work with the industrial base partners to deliver surface ships to the surface warfare officer box to the school boss on time, on schedule, with requisite quality, so that they can work with the fleet to meet operational requirements and continue to make Xi Jinping wake up tomorrow and say not today. But you must do this with the knowledge and conviction that we can't mortgage future readiness for current readiness. We can't defer our way into achieving current readiness. You must also undo this while you encourage the Navy and industry to work together to help rebuild the manufacturing base that won World War II and that we let out of fear the following years. In executing your orders, I encourage you to remember, if you don't like change, if you don't like irrelevance even less, assume noble intent of everybody except China or Russia. Never use the word they unless you're talking about China or Russia. None of us are smart as all of us. We're all behind you, we don't have to. Thank you all for choosing to work together to the our goal. Our nation depends on it. God bless America.
Rear Admiral William Green is a native of Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is why Captain Bauer can't introduce him as a native of Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> Admiral Green entered the Navy through the Reserve Officer Training Corps program at the University of Florida, where he earned a Bachelor of Science in Nuclear Engineering. He also holds a Master's in Business Administration from the University of Florida, a Master of Science in both Mechanical Engineering and Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering from MIT. His shipboard tours include USS Guitaro, SSN 665, USS West Virginia, SSBN 736, and USS Santa Fe, SSN 763. Following selection as an engineering duty officer, Admiral Green served ashore with multiple tours at Puget Sound Naval Shipyard and Intermediate Maintenance Facility, PSNS and IMF, Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard and IMF, Chief of Staff for NAVC-04 and Military Deputy for Shipyard Operations. Selected as the 84th Commander of Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, his command was recognized and awarded with the Department of Defense Robert T. Mason Award for Excellence in Depot Maintenance. In 2017, he was selected as the Depot, the Deputy Commander, Logistics, Maintenance, and Industrial Operations, NAFC-04, following which he reported as the Director of Fleet Maintenance, U.S. Pacific Fleet. In 2019, he became Director of Fleet Maintenance, U.S. Fleet Forces Command, and in August 2023, he assumed his current role as Commander, Navy Regional Maintenance Center Director, Surface Ship Maintenance, Modernization, and Sustainment. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral William Green, Commander, Navy Regional Maintenance Center. the mission 
without having to ask permission from their boss before taking every action or making any decisions. And John, you've been uh, very good at that the last part. Uh, derived from the earliest customs and traditions of our Navy, the change of command is an important and time-honored event. Today's gathering marks the formal transfer of authority, responsibility, and accountability for Southwest RFC and its mission from one leader to another. And with the words, I relieve you, we will have a new commanding officer. But before we get to that part, I get to brag a bit about John and his exceptional leadership in this extraordinary Southwest RFC and very challenging. And although we'll recognize that more formally in the comments, we'll have to share this with our panelists. This is a list of reflections. As the commanding officer of Southwest Army, John is responsible for the job, military, civilian, contractor personnel, as well as the execution of about 2.3 billion dollars of ship repair, modernization, and manpower. As the Naval Supervising Authority, it is accountable for the multi-million dollar depot maintenance availability contracts that our private sector shipyards execute for the Navy. Southwest RMC also has its own intermediate level maintenance capability where hundreds of sailors and civilians support all levels of maintenance, from large continuous maintenance availabilities or super sea maps, to expeditionary maintenance overseas, down to individual component casualty repairs. Southwest RMC has our largest water flow, with over 50 homeported warships. And when a ship is in port, there is almost always some sort of maintenance and modernization going on, almost all being executed under the supervision of the RMC. Additionally, John's team of engineers and technicians provide 24-7, 365 technical support to the ships of the Pacific Fleet, with both distance support and by traveling to the ships, whether they're right here in their home port, underway in the local op areas, or deployed. These technicians work tirelessly to ensure that material casualties are corrected quickly and the component or system is back online, ready to support the mission. What I'm trying to say in so many words is the command of Southwest RMC is a huge job. So with that context, I'll mention just a few of John's accomplishments. So Captain Bauer took over command of Southwest RMC 2021 at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. This was a challenging time for any commanding officer, but especially at a big industrial activity like Swarm. You can't overhaul a ship via Zoom. So John and his team had to figure out how to best execute their mission while protecting their people and with ever-changing rules and guidance from above. And as the pandemic wound down, John had to lead his team back through the difficult transition to normal operations. And he worked to quickly reestablish the culture and community of the command following those difficult years. He also took command in the wake of the major fire on the bottom of Shard. This was a terrible blow to the Navy and the command, and it left many, many people asking what we could have done differently to prevent such a tragedy. John had to not only implement the many changes to get industrial fire safety, but he also had to rebuild the morale of his team. And John, I know better than most. What a challenge that can be having taken command and of course with naval ship there and following the major fire when USS Miami. In addition to new standards of fire safety, uh, he established Code 800, the Expeditionary Maintenance Department, and they integrated the Latoll Combat Ship Maintenance Execution Teams into the command. This group has also been leading the charge in wartime readiness through the development and employment of Expeditionary Maintenance and Repair Containers, or EMARs, that can be flown to remote locations to support a maintenance team conducting emergency repairs. Also on John's watch, Southwest RMC took ownership of the World War II uh, era graving dock right here on the base. Uh, and they championed a uh, facility maintenance modernization period that resulted in that dry dock's full certification. This effort has provided to be a uh, game changing capability for the Navy. We've already docked two ships there for repairs, so even when uh, changing. Southwest RMC has also been a leader in innovation. They conducted cold spray repairs of our two rotorstock drill bearings from USS Essex. This is the largest and longest cold spray repair the Navy's ever performed. It took 23 hours of spraying, close to 220 pounds of specialized powder, and a semi truck trailer full of nitrogen, 80,000 cubic feet. Good job. I've had one like that for years. 
Most recently, John led a team to the emergent repairs to support the deployment of the USS Boxer, one of our big deck amphibs on the eve of our deployment. Uh, damage was discovered to the port propeller, requiring an unscheduled replacement. So we spent we had to ship one of these large propellers all the way across the country to get the dive team quickly together, changing out. I think that went in about two weeks. Pretty quick turnaround. Of course, uh, there's always something unexpected in maintenance. Shortly after the ship got in the way, they experienced the failure of their starboard rudder bear. These big components, 36 inches in diameter, several thousand pounds. The uh, installed bearing had come apart, damaged the rudder housing installed. So, in addition to a bearing replacement, significant repairs had to be conducted. It was a very complex repair uh, requiring first of kind in water replacement as well as the use of that new full spray technology. So the experience gained of the Essex really came in. The whole thing was a Herculean task and the team worked around the clock for two months to complete the repairs. And I'm glad to say Boxer has departed San Diego and is making the final crutch for her deployment. Any word on that? Uh, Let's not talk about that. Bad things coming for you. So. <laughs> All right. Finally, I'll share a few numbers. 40 warships delivered from large depot or CNO maintenance availabilities. Completion over, of over 700 intermediate uh, continuous maintenance availabilities. Over 11,000 check assist visits to support ships both in port and underway. 875 sailors trained and certified in maintenance specialties through our NAMS program. 32 chief petty officers pinned and 505 sailors in maintenance. And last of all, an accomplishment John is perhaps most well known, most well known for is that he shared 261 dad jokes during the course of his tour. He's 262 now, and a uh, number I suspect may still go up. <laughs> John, I know you want me to give all the credit uh, for the command's accomplishments to the great team you have here at Swarwick, except for the dad jokes, that's on you. Uh, however, great teams have great leaders. I'd be remiss if I did not recognize the impact of your personal leadership on this command in one of the toughest jobs in the Navy. And that reminds me, John, you know what SpongeBob SquarePants said when he was asked about how tough such things should be? That was very helpful. Okay. Well, he said it's like eating nails for breakfast without any milk. <laughs> In all seriousness, the role of the arms and commander is unique. You are the accountable officer, yet you must coordinate, collaborate, and even cajole a myriad of other stakeholders to accomplish the mission. John, you're a conductor a mediator and a coach all in one. You know maintenance is a team sport. You deliver a ship to the fleet. You do it as a team. You're passionate about winning and you work closely with the crew, the TICAR, the fleet, our private sector partners, AITs, NAFC contracting, NAFC engineering, our PDOs, our C-21 program managers, my CNRC headquarters, NAPSA, our warfare centers, the other SISCOMs, you get the idea there's a lot of people involved in this, all working together to get the job done. Also know you deeply care about your sailors and their well-being, and I think you heard that in our remarks today. And despite your workload, you volunteered to be the chairman of the engineering duty officer, ship maintenance repair letter group. And in this role, you have helped guide, coach, and advise a generation of engineering duty officers to be our future RMC leaders. You've been my trusted advisor for community development and successorship play for the last two years. John, you've done an incredible job leading Southwest RMC. You and your team have accomplished a great deal, and the command continues to build positive momentum despite many challenges. It's been a pleasure to work with you and watch your team in action. Your shipmates and I thank you and wish you and your family the best as you join our team at NAFC headquarters in DC. As we say farewell to John today, uh, we welcome Captain Brian Kurochic as he steps up to lead Southwest RFC. Brian is already part of the Regional Maintenance Center family, coming to us directly at, uh, from the commanding officer uh, for the Ford Deployment Regional Maintenance Center headquarters in Naples with uh, attachments in Rota Spain and Manama Brian. Brian comes into the job with a wealth of leadership and maintenance experience. As a surface warfare officer, he served as the fire control officer on the Cruiser Valley Forge and has made propulsion assistant on the Amphib uh, Ogden. That's a 600 pound scoop. I think that's going to come in here. Uh, during his individual augmentation tour at SECCOM in Operation Iraqi Freedom, Brian transferred from Council to the Engineering Duty Officer. He then earned his Master of Science in Applied Physics, including the postgraduate school. He 
As I said, he has earned numerous, uh, I'm sorry, he has held many numerous positions in the maintenance community to include a uh, port engineer and project officer here at Swarwick, a tour at Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, uh, where he was handpicked to serve as the Naval Reactor's Representative Office Assistant, and then served as the SSGN Deputy Program, uh, Deputy, uh, Program Deputy Project Superintendent. Uh, I'll tell you, that's a hard job. I was the Office Officer of Puget, and for the slows out there, SSGNs are kind of like the amphibs of the submarine, right? And they uh, have amazing capabilities, but they are really tough to maintain. I served two tours at, on the surfac staff, first as an action officer and then as the assistant chief of staff for maintenance and, and engineering, AKA and M43. And uh, Brian has had two OIC tours as officer in charge of the Iraqi Naval Ship Repair Facility during a second individual augmentation tour, and then another as the officer in charge of our Fort Point Regional Maintenance Center, Rotary Detachment. And then to top it off, he served as the deputy commander for our Hawaii Regional Maintenance Center. Brian is quite a resident. Your entire career has been preparing you to take over the fan of Southwest RMC at this moment. You build on the team's many accomplishments. We're confident you will lead Southwest RMC to new heights, and I can't wait to see what you and your team are going to do together. In closing, I'd like to thank you all for being here today as we celebrate John and Brian in their service as the world's greatest man. I know they will both continue to work hard to provide world class maintenance modernization and sustain to support our service group. John, if you would, please join me here at the podium so we can formally recognize your service. Rear Admiral Green will now present Captain Bauer with the Legion of Merit. Will the guests please rise? Swarming, God's hands shut. Commander, Naval Sea Systems Command, the President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Legion of Merit to Captain John P. Bauer, United States Navy. For service is set forth in the following citation, for exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service as commanding officer for Southwest Regional Maintenance Center, San Diego, California, from February 2021 to July 2024. Captain Bauer's leadership resulted in critical enhancements throughout his command. During his tenure, he led the execution of $3.5 billion in Pacific Fleet funded ship maintenance efforts, including over $220 million in Category 3 and 4 casualty report generated repair work, and $400 million for continuous maintenance execution. His maintenance acumen leadership and sailor focused vision were critical in the successful transfer of the, of the newest core mission pillar, expeditionary maintenance from commander Naval Surface Forces. Expanding maintenance cap capacity, he drove the transfer of the Naval Base Graving Dock from Naval Base San Diego to Southwest Regional Maintenance Center and acted to, re to restore operational capability, supporting the emergent docking of USS Tito DDG-63 and leading Southwest Regional Maintenance Center to a 15% year-over-year reduction in days of maintenance delay, all while providing countless personnel, personal hours to the engineering duty officer community, building and mentoring the next generation of officers to ensure they are ready to lead. By his dynamic direction, keen judgment, and loyal dedication to duty, Captain Bauer reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, signed J.B. Downey, Vice Admiral, United States Navy. <laughs> Will the guests please be seated? Swarmick. Parade rest. At this time, our Command Master Chief, Master Chief Richard Meek, would like to present a memento from the Swarming Chief Petty Officer Association.
Thank you, CMC. <laughs> and at this time, Lieutenant Kelty would like to present a memento from the Swarmick Wardroom. <laughs> Gentlemen, I now present Captain John Bauer, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, Southwest Regional Maintenance Center. foundational talk to our relationship and would prove to be monumental. I wish now it didn't have to come to an end as it is, but we've experienced moments of profound loss, moments of strife, and maybe more importantly, moments of glorious triumph. Through it all, you taught me three things in our relationship, three things that have left an indelible imprint on my heart. First, you taught me that willingness what willingness means in a relationship. Your willingness to provide unwavering support as a beacon of strength through the very storms we weathered together. Your belief in me was a source of courage and resilience for me. For heaven's sake, you encourage my damn dad jokes. You taught me that success is not merely a destination, but a journey marked by resilience, perseverance, and unwavering commitment to our goals together. The willingness to succeed begins with a mindset a steadfast belief that challenges are opportunities in disguise and setbacks are mere stepping stones to greater achievements. We thrived when we lifted each other up, celebrated each other's victories, and offered a helping hand during times of adversity. 
I ultimately learned from you that willingness as a, as a success is rooted in our ability to leverage, to leave a leveraged legacy of integrity and leadership that inspires others to dream boldly and strive relentlessly. Secondly, I admired your devotion. Southwest, your devotion was not merely a commitment or duty. It was a profound dedication that emanated from the depths of your hearts and defined our actions in service for a greater purpose. We shared laughter and tears, dreams and aspirations, and created memories that I will forever cherish and hold dear. Your devotion compelled us to persevere through adversity on several ships. Just take, it on, take a look at our good girl boxer. Even though she's not here, we persevered and got her underway. Mount, or Mount Rushmore, USS Rushmore. I'm already thinking about my trip across country. <laughs> USS Rushmore, with, that was a that was quite a strike. Uh, we managed to figure it out, come up with new ideas, and do it in water. And how about the USS Tripoli and Curtis Wilbur? Note on the Tripoli, the first amphib delivered early in 20 years. Nice job, team. Devotion was our foundation upon which we developed trust and respect for each other. For customers and for those that we worked with as part of our maintenance team. I will take away from our time spent together that devotion enriches a relationship and strengthens a bond. And it costs a hell of a lot of toast for these chips. And I swear, babe, I was giving them away for good deeds. I wasn't playing poker. Every other week, she was getting a new box at the house. She's like, what are these Cody's Orcus chips? What are you doing? We give them away for good deeds in the command as Atta Boys. It was like hundreds of them just kept coming to the house. Your devotion has prompted us to, prompted us to prioritize the well-being of others, to offer support in time of need, and to celebrate each other's success with genuine joy. And the last relationship quality you imprinted on my heart that I'm willing to share in confidence today is confidence. Confidence in our relationships and confidence in our abilities. As I reflect back on the strengths of our partnership, this is the one I have come to cherish above all things. And some in DC might even say we're a little bit too confident. They might even say we're a bit cocky. <laughs> confidence in this relationship and confidence in our ability was the cornerstone of the journey we had together. It allowed us to trust one another, to support each other through the challenges, to find the ability to question one another, and to celebrate our success with genuine joys. This mutual trust not only strengthened our bond, but also empowered us to take bold steps and pursue goals with unwavering determination. Our confidence fueled our growth. We added a graving dock, we added a code 800 department, we ordered another floating dock, and the list goes on and on. It was this confidence that I fell in love with when I became your commanding officer. I now share some of your confidence and I am sure it will guide us forward, inspiring us each to achieve new heights, even though we may not still be together. To my beloved family, as I reflect on the journey that has brought me to this moment, I find myself overwhelmed with gratitude for each of you. You have been my pillars of strength, my source of unconditional love, throughout every twist and turn of life's path. Mom and Dad, from the earliest memories of my childhood to the challenges and triumphs of adulthood. And I'm sure as you sit there now, you're thinking to yourself, the kid couldn't figure out long division, how in the hell to get up there. <laughs> but even with that, you stood by me with patience, understanding, and balance love. Your guidance has shaped my values, your encouragement has fueled my ambitions, and your presence has been a constant source of comfort. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for your, for your endless sacrifices and tireless efforts to provide you with opportunities beyond measure. To my sister, Bonnie, unfortunately, she's not able to be here. Uh, you have ever been a forever ally. Together, we've shared laughter and tears dreams and disappointments as any siblings do, and your unwavering support and solidarity have made every moment richer and more meaningful. To the Bambinos, 
and deeply touched by the maturity. Not all of stuff. <laughs> and compassion that you have shown as remarkable individuals in your own right. Your kindness towards me and each other for the better part of times reflects the values that we hold as hold as a family. Thank you for being my confidence, my confidants. And that translate translates as thank you for not telling Maria the stuff I buy. <laughs> you have been my cheerleaders and my reason for striving to be the best parent I can be. Your laughter fills my heart with warmth. Your achievements make me bubble with pride and your presence fills my life with me. To Maria, me and more. As I reflect on the journey together, I am overwhelmed with the gratitude for the love, support, and compassion you have given me every step of the way. You are not just my spouse, but my partner, my best friend, my greatest source of strength, especially on those nights when I come home and want to complain not about anybody here. <laughs> Thank you for standing by my side through the ups and downs of life and believing me, believing in me when I doubted myself and for celebrating my successes as if they were your own. Your unwavering support has been a constant reassurance together that we can knock down any target that pops up. Your kindness, your patience, understanding make every day in command brighter and more meaningful. I am blessed beyond measure to have you as my better half Maria, I cherish the life we have built together. I am excited to see you flourish in DC. DC. <laughs> just hit maturity as a CEO. It usually happens like year three. <laughs> I'm excited to see you flourish in DC as it is your turn. Target down, baby. To my entire family, I'm grateful beyond measure to be your son, to be your sibling, to be your parent most of the time. And to be your spouse. This is your show tag here. Maria and Mom, please accept these flowers as a token of my appreciation of your love and support. Yeah. We are. This command has been my greatest love. You can ask my wife, she usually referred to you as my mistress, and this ships as our kids. And they behave just as poorly as some of the other kids. Have. The memories we created will forever be etched in my heart, and I hope in yours too. Unfortunately, I believe that this separation, though necessary and mandatory according to the boss, is essential, essential for both of us to continue to the journey that life has carved out for each of us. I will always cherish what we have shared and hold you dear in my thoughts and prayers. With all my love and respect, continue to serve with honor, courage, and commitment. And last but not least, I am John Bauer, State Class Southwest. <laughs> by reporting senior, detached from duty as the commanding officer, Southwest Regional Maintenance Center, and reports to NAV C Systems Command, Washington, D.C., effective August 2024. Captain, I am ready to be relieved. Board <laughs> <laughs> mod. 
I'll now read my orders. April 3037, when Director Parker reported senior detached June 2024, report to command officer of Southwest Regional Maintenance and as his relief. Will the guests please be seated, swarming at ease. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Brian A. Karosich, Commanding Officer, Southwest Regional Maintenance Center. Thank you for being here today. It really is great to be back in San Diego and I'm so honored to lead Southwest Regional Maintenance Center. I really am humbled and uh, grateful for this opportunity. 26 years ago today, 26 years ago, my career as service war officer began in San Diego. And 18 years ago, almost to the day, I reported to this command, my engineer duty officer command qualification tour. So coming back as a command officer truly feels like a homecoming. I believe that across the entire NAFC enterprise, there's no better place to make an impact than the regional maintenance center. The impact of national policy, the Navy, the ships, and the lives of sailors and Marines are without peer across all now sea. I tend to keep my mark short and would like to begin with a couple of personal thank yous. To Luis, Commissioner uh, Billet, uh, Neil Van, and everyone who worked hard but spent together, thank you. It was really special. Uh, I appreciate that very much. I'm a green. You know, sort of feels like uh, we didn't do this too long ago. Uh, but again, I appreciate your time and mentorship, faith in me to lead this amazing organization. I look forward to continuing to work with you as a meeting Sino Frankadis call to get more players on the field. I'm a lawyer. Thank you, sir, uh, for being here today participating. I've always appreciated your mentorship, uh, thoughts, candor, and energy you bring to an organization. Ms. Wolves, uh, again, thank you for making the trip out here. You're truly a busy schedule. Look forward to working with you and your team in completing the mission. Uh, fellow captains, commodores, commanders, uh, as well as our industry partners, again, I look forward to establishing our relationship and teaming with you all to take ships. JB, you've always said I pity the fool who's going to follow in your footsteps, and now here we are. <laughs> you did an amazing job the past three years at Southwest Regional Maintenance Center and on this waterfront. Thank you for your friendship, leadership, and counsel. Uh, I'm honored to call you a dear friend and a brother and succeed you in command. Uh, to the entire uh, Swarmer team, it's great to be back. I look forward to leading and working with you all. Uh, I appreciate your dedication to our mission to ships and our sailors. You provide a real warfront advantage to our Navy and give our sailors the confidence they need to operate their ships and systems when needed. Uh, I love extended family and friends. They were making here today. Many coming from Central California, Arizona, and Washington. Uh, thank you for everything. Appreciate you all being here, especially your support of Reed, Katie, Cody, and myself. Last of my wife, Katie, and my boys, Reed and Cody. Has not been easy, uh, the constant mood and uprooting, but I uh, truly appreciate your flexibility the last 15 years, and Katie's been an amazing ride. But it has been 17 years of late nights, missed dinners, travel, uprooting, countless other things you had to endure, PCS and on your own. And uh, I thank you for holding me accountable and getting me here today. I love you. As I said earlier, I'm humbled to be back, working with the most amazing men and women our nation has to offer. Just last month, I left the Florida Flood Regional Maintenance Center in Naples, Italy, where our job was to keep the players on the field. Here at Southwest, our job was to get the players on the field, fully mission ready. With significant focus on resources required in our specific mission and on time completion of work, timely correction of casualties, and first time quality are not just desired, they are required. I always view maintenance as full time, full, full contact team sport, and the key word there being team. Our success requires this waterfront, our Navy, our industry partners, and all stakeholders working together for the ships, the sailors, and the sailors that sail them in a harm's way. We create that warfighting advantage, and we will not let them down. Again, I'm honored I'm going to be here leading this team and work with you all. Thank you. Will the guests please rise for the benediction and remain standing until the completion of the ceremony? Full boss. 
Gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Guests are welcome to attend a gathering of Captain Bauer's family and friends at Kimball's Coastal Eatery. Directions and address can be found at the cake table, which I've been told is over in that direction. Thank you for attending. Swarmick, dismissed.